said with you to hear sometimes to stir her up and we were having our devotions today and, and we were sitting at the table and she got her iPhone and put it right there and we we'll always listen to daily bread it's tremendous uh, it's a tremendous we got a bunch of them here and they're good and we were listening to daily bread and it was it was talking about Jesus when uh, he'd come around some kids and he was making over them and the disciple says, no, 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 don't worry about it. He, he didn't have time for them. And the, and the, the, the reading of the, the uh, verse there was a different version than King James. He says, Jesus was indignant. I said, I said, that's not right. She said, what are you talking about? I said, that's not right. I didn't what he said. He said, and he was very much displeased. He said, that, she said, well, that's what indignant means. I said, that, that isn't what it said. King James says, and he was very much displeased. He, no, no. The version we're reading said, and Christ was indignant. What's indignant? Now, if you said he was very much displeased, I know what you're saying. He was not happy. 
he was very irritated with his disciples for stopping him touching little Jesus, little children. So you say, what's the big deal? Well, I messed things up. She said, well, why do you have to mess up our devotion? <laughs> Here we're having our devotion, and you get carried away with a word. I say, words are important, very important. And when you start leaving words out and adding words that are difficult, don't understand, kids don't understand that. He was indignant. I said, I don't want to say the King James. He was very much displeased. Now, I understand that. I'm a simple person. Well, I just want to share that with you. I thought you'd get a blessing out of that. <laughs> we got right, though. We finally made up. I gave her a big hug. She gave me a kiss. And so we're all, we're back together. She got indignant. <laughs> She was, very, she was very much displeased with my Second Peter chapter 3, 18 verses, and we begin. If you'll notice, he says, This second epistle or letter, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. And I took that word remembrance. I begin to look at it. There's a lot of things about the Lord wants us to remember. I stir up your pure mind by way of remembrance. And Peter was very strong on this word here, remember. And he said uh, a lot of things about that on the, in, right here about remembrance. Things that you need to remember. Here it is. I look, every, I look up everywhere to find the word remember or remembrance or remembering. And I'm a detailed word person. And I like to look at words. And so I looked up that word remember. And here's a few things. You, I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. I want to remember some things because why? We forget. We get careless. We get cold. We get indifferent. We forget. And so we need these things repeated over and over and over. He says, I will thou affirm them constantly. He says, I want you to make this plain over and over again. You say you repeat yourself. Many of these epistles, as we said before, it's repeating the same subject or the same thing about how you get saved, how you to live a dedicated life, how you to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And it needs to be emphasized. So here's what he says about this. Remember the day that Jesus said to Peter, before the rooster crows, you will deny me. Peter said, oh, no, Lord, you can count on me. Now, Peter meant that. He really meant, Lord, I'm going to be with you through thick and thin. I'll go with you to the dead. He says, no, no, Peter, before the rooster crows three times, you will deny me. No, I will not. Well, he, then he said this in Luke chapter 22. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. After he had denied him and said, I don't know the man. He says, you're one. I don't know. I, he began to curse. And he looked and Jesus looked at him. This is what it says. Luke 22, 61. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord. How he said unto him, before the cock of the rooster crows, thou should deny me three times. The Lord knows all about us. He knows our strengths. He knows our weaknesses. He loves you with a love that we can't even comprehend. We're told over in Exodus chapter 13. Remember the day in which you came out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. For by strength of the hand, the Lord brought you out from this place. We need to remember that we've been redeemed as these songs have been sung about the cross, the blood being shed. But get him off that cross. He went to, he got him down from the cross, bloody mass of humanity, thorns, bloody, put him in a tomb, he rose again the third day. And by the resurrection reality, that he not only came and was born, he went to Calvary on that cross and bled and died for our redemption without the shedding of blood. There's no forgiveness. And then he took him down from the cross, they put him in the tomb. Third day, he rose again. We need to remember that. Thank God for the complete gospel. According to the scripture, Jesus died for our sins. He was buried. On the third day, he rose again. And we thank God for that truth and reality. 
Again, we find the word remember. Deuteronomy 9, 7. Remember and forget not how thou provoked the Lord thy God to wrath in the wilderness from the day that thou didst depart out of the land of Egypt until you came into this place. You have been a rebellious against the Lord. Deuteronomy 16. Remember what the Lord did to Miriam. Miriam, sister of Moses, began to rebuke him. And the Lord struck her down. Touch not by the anointed. Do my prophet no harm. And she began to talk about her brother, put him down, and God struck her with leprosy. Remember what the Lord did to Miriam. It says this. You see, Ecclesiastes 12.1. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while you're young, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Remember Lot's wife? She had to look back one more time. The Lord says, get out of here. Don't even look back. If you look back, you'll turn to the pillar of salt. And she had to look one more time on the cities of Sodom, the plain Sodom. She looked back and God struck her down. She turned to a pillar of salt. One more time, I got to look at the world. I got to be a part of the world. I hate to leave the world. There's a part of us as children of God. We sometimes want to be carnal, worldly, and fleshly. He says, remember, remember these people, whereby I stir you up by way of remembrance of who you are, what you are, what God is doing with you and for you. We need to remember that, things we need to remember. He goes on to say this, Hebrews 13, 7, remember them which have the rule over you, your overseer, your elder, your leader. He's nothing but a sinner saved by the grace of God just like you. With faults and failures. Forgetting. We need to encourage one another. He says in Revelation 2, 1 through 7. Remember therefore from which thou art fallen. Now we'll get to this in a few moments. He says beware of the evil ones. That you begin to follow them. And you fall from your steadfastness. So we have these words. Remember. Stir you up. We need to be stirred up. I stirred my wife up today. And she came back and stirred me up. She became indignant. <laughs> Words. Remember them. Remember what God is doing with us and for us. We find there in Revelation 2, 1 through 7, verse 5. Remember from whence thou art fallen and repent. God's people fall. God's people fail. God's people sometimes fumble the ball. We get faint, we get weary, we get worn. We become forgetful. And God says, remember these words. I stir you up by way of remembrance. He says, I, I give you, the, he, he, this is very interesting what Peter says. He's, he he used that word remember. He says in 2 Peter, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things. Though you know them, you've heard this before. What I'm going to say today, you've heard it before. You know these things, he says, though you know them and be established in the present truth. Notice what it says. Yeah, I think it'd be as long as I'm this tabernacle to stir you up, putting you in remembrance. Putting you in remembrance. Second Peter 1 5. Lord, I will endeavor after a I am deceased to have these things always in remembrance. I've write the Spirit of God has given them to you that you might have these things to remember. Remember, Jude 1 5. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew these things. As God brought the people out of the land of Egypt, after he destroyed them, they believed not and served him. So we find these words here. Look at 2 Peter again, chapter 2, verse 1. The second letter, beloved, I write unto you, in both which I stir you up, your pure minds, by way of remembrance, that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken by you, by the holy prophets, of the commandments of the apostles, of the Lord and Savior Jesus, knowing this first, knowing this first. Now he repeats that again over a little further. Knowing this first, first things first. 
And there shall come in the last day scoffers. You know, what's a scoffer? What's indignant? A scoffer, they'll mock you. They'll jeer you. They'll make fun of you. Talking about the coming of the Lord. Jesus coming back. He's going to, no, he said they'll mock, that they will come and they'll make fun of you. They will mock you. Words, very important. What they mean. He says this, verse 4. And say, where is the promise of his coming? Where's the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Hi, how long have we been here? Jesus is coming. I've been hearing this preached from the pulpit, preachers, these Bible thumping preachers talking about Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming, and they begin to mock you. They make fun of you. They make fun of all God's word. This is very interesting. Look what he says. And say, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Now verse 5 is an interesting word. I looked up that word ignorant. It says this. For they willingly are ignorant. Some people are willingly ignorant. They, they just choose to be unlearned, not taught, know what the truth is. They're willingly ignorant. He said, I would not you to be ignorant of those which sleep. The word ignorant means not tall, untrained, not educated, not informed. And so all we're trying to do here by the word of God and even by illustration of diagram, trying to inform you, trying to instruct you who you are, starting when the church was established. And what's going to happen to the church? We have it all right here. It just laid out. Alpha and the Mega, all in between. The Lord wants you to know who you are, what you are, and when Christ is coming back, and what's going to happen when he comes back. And it's kind of outlined right here. They're ignorant. They're, they're, they're willingly ignorant. By the word of, of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of water and in water, whereby the world that within was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept restored with fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. The Lord looked upon the earth of his creation, and man's heart was continuously evil. And God says he's going to destroy every living creature with breath in his nostrils. And you go back to the, the old world, Noah's day. And so I want to take your, your diagram right here just for a moment. Hold it up. You got it right there? This is, this is visual aids. And so you look at the very top. Ages and dispensations. We find the alpha there, there on the left hand side. The omega the very end. And all in between. Gives you a diagram of the things that are taking place. And where we are right now. Where are we? Well let's look at this. There's the Adam. There's the dispensation Adam to Noah. You see the little arc there? There's the flood. There's Noah. Noah to Abraham, Abraham to Moses, the lawgiver, dispensation of Moses to Christ. You see the cross? You see the cross right there? How long has it been since Jesus died on that cross? Over 2,000 years. And now we're the church. That's where we are right now. You see that circle there? That's where we are in God's program and outline of what's taking place. And the many years that get to that place. So we're living right there in the church age. And we find on the cross there, the first, look at the very bottom, the first resurrection is of Christ. When he died on that cross, he rose again the third day. The Bible says in Jerusalem, many of the saints rose that were dead, their bodies rose up and walked in Jerusalem. Now they died again, of course, or either they went with, what happens? Christ is resurrected. He's taken up, he's ascended. The church is established. And so we find that we're living right there in the church. That's where we are in God's plan and program, right after the cross. It's been over 2,000 years plus and we've been there. And what are we waiting for? We're waiting for the resurrection of the church. It's called the rapture, not the rupture. The rapture. You see the church is called up and called out. The judgment seat of Christ right there in the very top. And in that period of time, 
will be the tribulation. Seven years. And then Christ will come back at the revelation. He'll come. So the coming of the Lord. He came first to die for our sins and pay our sin debt. He ascended, but he's coming back to meet us in the air. Where is it? Right here. There it is. The resurrection of the church. And then after the tribulation, it'll be the Old Testament saints and the tribulation saints will be resurrected. And then they're going to be a million. They're going to be a thousand years. Satan is going to be bound for 1,000 years during the millennium. Can you imagine living on the earth where Satan is bound? That's coming. It's coming. It's all right here. Visual aids. Program of events. And after the millennium, we find there's going to be another resurrection. It'll be the resurrection of the dead. And then the judgment seat of, of, of the judgment seat. Only unsaved people will be there. And then there's going to be a fiery baptism. Now look, drop down to the bottom. The bottom of your page. Look at this. We find that there's a church. The ascension of Christ. The birth of the church. The rapture. You see the rapture there? There's the tribulation right there. The judgment seat of Christ is up in the air. Then we find that Christ is coming back. There's going to be a judgment of the nations. The millennium. And then there's going to be the judgment the great white throne judgment. And then you see that fire right there, that fire. It's going to talk about that right here in Revelation. I mean, in, in Peter. It's going to be the renovation of fire. You see, you didn't know where that was. Oh, where is it going to take place? It's right there, visual aids. It's all right here in 2 Peter chapter 3. Now look what he says here in 2 Peter chapter 3. You see the renovation of the fire? 2 Peter chapter 3, 6 through 15 or 13. And then there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Now, when you turn this thing over, if you want to see where the church is, all during these times, during the church age, you see where the church is on the bottom of the page there? You see the church is called up? The church is, the church is going to come back? The church is right there hovering over the millennial earth? When, the, when this fire, see where the church, the heaven, the new earth, renovation by fire before the heaven... Oh, you see where the church, that's where you're going to be. All these places where you're going to be. The church, that's who you are. And so when you get an outline like this, it shows you the plan and purpose of God's redemption. Tremendous. And I'm glad you got it. Let's go back and read this now. Verse 8. Verse 7. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved on the fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant. Be not ignorant. Don't be a spiritual ignorant person. That's why the preacher must inform you. The teacher must teach you. The, the teacher must show you these things to come. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. One day is with the Lord as a thousand years. And a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack. I like this. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men catch slackness, but is long suffering. This verse 9 is so precious. God is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. Two or two thousand years, he hasn't come back yet. It's his long suffering, his mercy, his patience. That's where we're living, in the age of grace. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. And the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. Boom, 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 boom. The heavens will pass away with a great noise. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also shall be, work shall be, therein shall burn, be burned up. Seeing these things shall be dissolved. What is this talking about? There it is right there. You see where that fire is? You see that fire? It's called the renovation of the heavens and the earth. It has to be purified before the earth. There'll be a new heaven and new earth and Christ sitting there in the new Jerusalem. It's all right here. He says right here. Seeing that all these things shall be dissolved, verse 11, go to verse 12. What kind of person ought you to be in all holy conversation in God? We need to be godly and holy and decently different in a world that hates God, hates Christ, hates the things of God, hates the word of God. We need to be holy. The word holy, the word sanctify, the word saint all come from the same word. Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Separation. Verse 12. Looking for and hastening the coming of the Lord, the day of the Lord, when the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved. 
and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, here's our hope. Here's our promise. We, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. See, it's all right there. We see where the church is coming. It's going to one day. Throw in the back. You see the church is going to be right there. A new heaven and a new earth where it dwelleth righteousness. Right now, where your loved ones, they're in heaven. They're in paradise. When Jesus Christ is going back, he's coming back. He'll take us up and take us out. There'll be a millennium. After a thousand years, the church will be up in heaven while the fiery baptism cleanses the heavens, the earth. It'll cleanse it. And the, and the church will come back. And that's what he says here. Look what it says in closing. Verse 13. Nevertheless, according to his promise, we look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, see that you know these things. Be diligent. Be on fire. Be burning. Be shining. That you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. An account of the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. He was our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, has written to you. As also in all, here, here Peter is talking about Paul, all of his epistles, all of his letters. As also in all of his letters, speaking of these things, in which some things are hard to be, some things are hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and un unstable they rest the scriptures, as they do other scriptures, to their own destruction. You therefore, beloved, seeing you know these things before, beware, beware, lest you be led away with the air of the wicked. You fall, you being led away with the air of the wicked. They'll make fun. They'll make. You'll be led. Away. You will fall from your own steadfastness. I look up that word steadfast. It's found 15 times in the New Testament. Steadfast. Be steadfast. Unmoved. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Steadfast. Steady. Sturdy. Someone God can count on. He says, therefore, my beloved, seeing you know these things, beware lest you be, you be led away with the air of the wind. You fall from your steadfastness. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to Him be glory, both now and forever. He said to the, the church in Ephesus, Forget not from which you have fallen. Forget not from which you have fallen. We fall, we fail, we, we fumble the ball. Get back up. Be steadfast. Be sturdy. Keep on serving Jesus no matter what. That's what we need to do. Isn't that wonderful? That's a tremendous chapter. 18 verses. Power packed. Full of things about being informed, being taught, being instructed. And they have a program to know where we are in God's great drama of redemption. Where am I? We're in the church age, waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ to come and take us up and take us out. We'll be in the Lord in a place called paradise. Then there's going to be a tribulation like the earth has never seen before. Then one day he'll come back with us. We'll rule and reign with Christ in the millennial reign. We're going to rule with him. Then when he brings the renovation where the elements shall melt with fervent heat, our house, all the things we, we cherish, will be burned up. They're temporal. They're passing. And God wants you to keep an eye on the eternal value system. May God help you. May God help me to be what he wants us to be. In this world in which we live, be steadfast, unmovable, Always abounding in the work of the Lord. When it's cold, when it's raining, when you feel bad, when you feel good, keep serving Jesus. God will bless you. If there's someone without Christ, today is the day of salvation. Ask the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your heart. You believe he died for you. He shed his blood. He rose again the third day. That's God's salvation. Receive him today. And may we Christians go from this place to serve Jesus like we never served him before. Thank you. Brother Steve, come on up, if you would, please. Our Father, we're thankful for a time we can come together, study the, the Scriptures, line upon line, word upon word, rightly dividing the word of truth, rightly dividing the word of truth, that we might know the truth, and the truth will set us free. Oh, God, help us to use our liberty wisely, serving you in a way that will please you. We'll thank you for it. 
In Christ's name, amen.